is the actor that uh, played Bright Bill, Kit Connor. Look at these illustrations. You know, what's so important about these books is that even if somebody who's not a movie goer or into animation, when I say movie goer, I should say movie buff, if people actually even got these books for like a day or two and didn't even read everything and just went through the visuals, it just says so much about what goes into making these films. Like it's a four to five year long project, maybe even longer in some cases. Um, meet Fink. Pedro Pascal nailed this character. Uh, I thought it was one of the best characters in the um, in the film. And it, the arc of this character was phenomenal because you know, foxes are known to be very clever and very uh, conniving and, and all that. And you see how this character transforms, which I'm not going to reveal in the film for those who haven't seen it, but how it, it, the character um, transforms from beginning to end. This is more or less, I think, the final look of Roz. This is a lot, Ra, not Roz, sorry, uh, Fink. Fink a lot of, reminded me a lot of Disney's Fox and Hound. Um, nothing to do with the premise or the character just the colors that i saw it just kind of brought back fox and hound for me pink tail is probably and it's pink tail in the family pink tail is played by Catherine o'hara uh home alone mom and um, she's also in the new movie beetlejuice beetlejuice uh pink tail is the humor relief as well as the motherhood character in the entire film and the kids that pink tail has I mean, you guys are going to get a kick out of it. Uh, it, it has some one of the most amazing short lines that really hit home in terms of humor, in terms of boldness. Really well done. That's a picture of Catherine O'Hara. Forest full of animals. So these are the rest of the characters. There's a lovely sequence with the raccoons in the beginning of the film, which people will enjoy. Thorn, which is played by who was played by. I did not know this until the credits roll because they show who played who. Uh, Mark Hamill, um, obviously, a.k.a. Luke Skywalker, but you cannot tell um, it's Mark Hamill because the, 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 the voice that he has is just so different. And his, his character plays a very important role in the film, especially towards the end. Uh, Paddler had also an integral part to the entire film. It, that's, that's what a good story does. Every main character has a goal. And, you know, whether it's a protagonist or a supporting cast, they all have their little goals which combine in an overall arc of the story. And that's what this film does really, really well. I'm not saying other f films don't, but this one does it really, really well. Every character is there for a reason, and every character has its own goal. This is obviously the other part of the film, where Roz comes from. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it very much, but it's like a futuristic um, city, if you want to call it. Here are some more illustrations. Meet Thunderbolt. That was a uh, played by Ving Rhames, another good character. Very small role, but uh, important role for sure. And this is Meet Long Longneck, another integral part of the film. Uh, the oldest, the wisest, and the biggest goose on our island is Longneck. From migration, the migration from story to screen. That was a breathtaking uh, sequence, and that's all I'm going to say about it. A uh, little quote from Chris Sanders. Roz is so single-minded about getting this task done, states Sanders. Initially, it's just the way she's programmed, but she becomes obsessed with the task that is Bright Bill. Cinematography. Um, I'm going to read a quote here. It says, The opening of the migration sequence provided us with the opportunity to present a big sense of scale to our world through the aerial photography and vast landscapes with a flight documentary feel. Yeah, it's it's true. It's so true. Inspection, animation, music. I do urge you guys to get the soundtrack from uh, Apple Music or Spotify. Um, and it it's totally integrates with the soundtrack, but it live, lives on its own too. Uh, sorry, it totally integrates with the film, but it lives on its own too. The World of Universal Dynamics. That's a chapter in the film. I'm not going to dive too much into it, but just giving you guys a little bit of visuals. The winter sequences were one of the most breathtaking sequences. I mean, you actually feel that you're physically there the way they were able to put the characters in this environment. And you feel that you're there and you're feeling their pain. Yeah, this film is a combination of, to me, it got 
small elements from Iron Giant, E.T., Wally, Bambi, um, Black Stallion. Um, yeah, there's just so much in there, and you know, but it it stands on its own. It's not like it, it copied anything. It just got influences from there, and it's, it's in its own self, its own film.